Senator Harris, next up is Senator Kennedy. <clears throat> Mr. Zuckerberg, I come in peace. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to vote to have to regulate Facebook, but my God, I will. But that, a lot of that depends on you. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in this hearing today. I just don't feel like that we're connecting. So, so let me try to lay it out for you from my point of view. I think you're a really smart guy. And I think you have built an extraordinary American company. And you've done a lot of good. Some of the things that you've been able to do are magical. But our, our promised digital utopia, we have discovered, has minefields. There, there are some impurities in the Facebook punch bowl. And they got to be fixed. And I think you can fix them. Now, here, here's what's going to happen. There are going to be a whole bunch of bills introduced to regulate Facebook. It's up to you whether they pass or not. You can go back home, uh, spend $10 million on lobbyists and fight us, or you can go back home and uh, help us solve this problem. And there are two. One's a privacy problem. The other one is what I call a propaganda problem. Let's start with the privacy problem first. Let's start with the user agreement. Here's what everybody's been trying to tell you today, and I, I, I say this gently. Your user agreement sucks. <laughs> You're a, you, you, you can spot me 75 IQ points. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. The purpose of that user agreement is to cover Facebook's rear end. It's not to inform your users about their rights. Now, you know that, and I know that. I'm going to suggest to you that you go back home and rewrite it. And tell your $1,200 an hour lawyers, no disrespect, they're good. But, but tell them you want it written in English, in non-Swahili, so the average American can understand it. That would be a start. I, are, are you willing, as a Facebook user, are you, are you willing to give me more control over my data? Senator, as someone who uses Facebook, I believe that you should have complete control over your data. Okay. Are, are you willing to uh, go back and, and, and work on, on giving me a greater right to erase my data? Senator, you can already delete any of the data that's there or are, are delete all of your data. Are you willing to expand that, work on expanding that? Senator, I think we already do what you're referring to, but certainly we're always working on trying to make these controls easier. Are, are you willing to expand my right to know who you're sharing my data with? Senator, we already give you a list of apps that, that you're using, and you signed into those yourself and provided affirmative consent. Right. As on I've said user, before, we that, don't share any that, data on with... that user agreement. Uh, are, are you willing to uh, expand my right to prohibit you from sharing my data? Senator, again, I believe that you already have that control. So, I mean, I think people have that, that full control in the system already today. Uh, if we're not communicating this clearly, then that's a big thing that we should work on, because I think the principles that you're articulating are the ones that we believe in and try to codify in the product that we build. Are, are you willing to give me the right to take my data on Facebook and move it to another social media platform? Senator, you can already do that. We have a download your information tool where you can go, get a file of all the content there, and then do whatever you want with it. And you're, are you, then I assume you're willing to give me the right to say, I'm going to go on your platform and you're going to be able to tell a lot about me as a result, but I don't want you to share it with anybody. Yes, Senator, and I believe you already have that ability today. People can sign on and choose to not share things and just follow some friends or some pages and read content if that's what they want to do. Okay. Um, let me be sure I understand. I'm about out of time. Boy, it goes fast, doesn't it? 
Let me ask you one final question in my 12 seconds. Could somebody call you up and say, I want to see John Kennedy's file? Absolutely not. Could you, if it, not, not, could you, not would you do it, could you do it? Uh, in, in theory. Do you have the right to put my data, a name on my data, and share it with somebody? I do not believe we have the right to do that. Do you have the ability? Senator, the data is in the system. Do so you have the ability? Technically, I think someone could do that, but that would be a massive breach. So we would never do that. It would be a breach. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senator Kennedy. Senator Baldwin's up next. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for uh, being here and uh, enduring a long day, Mr. Zuckerberg. Um, I want to start with what I hope can be a quick round of, of questions, just so I uh, make sure I understand your previous testimony. Um, specifically with regard to uh, uh, the process by which Cambridge Analytica uh, was able to purchase uh, Facebook users' data. So it was an app developer, Alexander uh, Kogan. He collected data via a personality quiz. Uh, uh, is that correct? Yes. OK. And he thereby is able to gain access of not only the people who took the quiz, but their network. Is that correct, too? Senator, yes. The terms of the platform at the time allowed for uh, people to share their information and some basic information about their friends as well. And we've since changed that. As of 2014, and, now that's not possible. And so uh, in total, about 87 million uh, Facebook users. You earlier testified about the two t types of ways you gain data. One is what is voluntarily shared by Facebook members and users. And the other is um, in order to, I think you said, improve your advertising experience, whatever that exactly means the data that Facebook collects in order to customize or, or focus on that. Did, was uh, Alexander Kogan able to get both of those sets of data or just what was voluntarily entered by the user? Yes, that's a good question. It was just a subset of what was entered by the person. And so a subset of the 95 uh, uh, categories of data that you keep. Yes. And when you sign okay. into an app, you, the app developer has to say, here are the types of data that, from you that I'm asking for, mm -hmm. including public information like your name and profile, the pages you follow, other interests on your profile, that kind of content. Okay. The app developer has to disclose that up front, and you agree to it. Okay. Uh, so in answer to a couple of other senators' questions, uh, specifically Senator Fisher, you uh, talked about Facebook storing this data, and I think you just talked about the data being in the system. Um, I wonder if uh, outside of the way in which uh, Alexander Kogan was able to access this data, whether you uh, could Facebook be vulnerable to a data breach or hack? Why or why not? Well, there are many kinds of security threats that a company like ours faces including people trying to break into our security systems. Okay. And if you believe that you had been hacked, do you believe you would have the duty to inform those who were impacted? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know whether uh, uh, Alexander Kogan sold any of the data he collected with anyone other than Cambridge Analytica? Senator, yes, we do. He sold it to a couple of other firms. Uh, Can you identify them? Yes, there was one called uh, Unoya, and there may have been a couple of others as well. And can I you can furnish follow that up to me you. after? Thank yes. you. I appreciate that. And then, um, how much do you know, or have you tried to find out, uh, how Cambridge Analytica used the data while they had it before um, you believe they deleted it? Since we just heard that they didn't delete it about a month ago, we've kicked off an internal investigation to see if they use that data in any of their ads, for example. 
that investigation is still underway, and we will we can come back to you with the results of that once we have that. Okay. I want to switch to my home state of Wisconsin. According to press reports, my home state of Wisconsin was a major target of Russian-bought ads on Facebook in the 2016 election. These divisive ads, um, touching on a number of very polarizing issues, were designed to interfere with our election. We've also learned that um, Russian actors using another platform, Twitter, uh, similarly targeted Wisconsin with divisive content aimed at sowing uh, division and dissent, including in the wake of a police-involved shooting in Milwaukee's Sherman Park neighborhood in August of 2016. Now, I, I find some uh, encouragement in the steps you've outlined today to provide greater transparency regarding political ads. Um, I do want to get further information on how you can be confident um, that you have uh, excluded entities based outside of the United States. Uh, we will follow up on that. And then uh, I think on that uh, topic, um, if you require uh, disclosure of a political ads sponsor, um, what sort of transparency uh, will you be able to provide with regard to people who weren't the subject of that ad seeing its content? Senator, you'll be able to go to any page and see all of the ads that that page has run. So if someone is running a political campaign, for example, and they're targeting one district with one ad and another district with another. Historically, it's been hard to track that down, but now it'll be very easy. You'll just be able to look at all of the ads that they've run, the targeting associated with each to see what they're saying to different, to different folks, uh, and in, in some cases, how much they're spending on, on the ads, uh, and all, all of the relevant information. This is an area where I think more transparency will really help discourse overall and root out foreign interference in elections. Thank you, and Senator you Baldwin. Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you Mr. Zucker.